hello everyone welcome back to my channel and in this video we will be making the entire login process including the validation request uh, from whether the user exists or not from generating the jwd token and passing it to the front end as well uh, so in the earlier videos we have completed the sign up process entirely and added a added layer of security to it and saved it in a hashed format so if you haven't uh, watched the video i will attach a link over there you can definitely go ahead and check it out so without wasting any more time uh, let's begin so this is the dependency that you have to import in your build.gradle file to start your uh, jwd token process entirely so i will explain to it what exactly it means in the in the coming video right now uh, so yeah Going ahead I, in the in the user auth controller, I have created a new method and a new context path that the post mapping is to login. And in this login, I am taking the user auth DTO. In the earlier videos, you must have seen it as a register uh, auth. So I just renamed it to user auth uh, to make it a bit more generic to be used in this uh, user auth uh, controller class. Okay. So the all the validations are pretty much the same, and we are going ahead with the industry level standards of validation. And so go ahead, there's this particular login method. So we'll go ahead and check the service implementation. So this login method is called from the controller class and it calls, it takes email and password. So the first step itself, what, it, the, what we have coded is that we have to check that this user exists in our database or not. So if the user exists, then only we will go ahead. Okay, this is an and check that I have made. And the second is that as you remember, we have encoded our password in a hashed format in the previous video. And this and this time, uh, the hashed password is being checked by what the password has been provided by the front end or by any of your postmen. So email and password, we have checked whether this email exists and the password is validated that it is matching our encoded password in the DB. If it's not, then we'll send an invalid credentials. If it does, then we will generate the JWD token and uh, and we will send the successful response and pass the JWD token. So let's go ahead and see what exactly is this JWD token and how we are generating it. So this is a class that you will need to write and it will be a component as well uh, to JWD utils. In this utils class, there is a key that is you have to make and generate through, uh, you can use this uh, command uh, to generate your uh, JWD token on your local uh, PC itself. And as you can see that I have generated this key uh, through the local SSH. So this is uh, as right now uh, our environment is not a production level environment. So we can just put it over here. But on a later videos, we definitely uh, will be looking forward to how to save this key more securely and more effectively. So going ahead, let's go to the generate token part of how exactly the token is generated. So this generate token takes email as an input and what it does it, it combines the email, the current time what it's being issued on and the time it will be validated for. So right now what the logic says is email, the current time and it is going to be valid for the next 10 hours. So this is the uh, all the things that have to be necessary in the JW token to check whether this thing has expired or not. So this plays a really crucial part on your session management things. And for example, any banking software works on this, the logic of JW token and the expiry. So that if you if you have tried any net banking solutions, you will log in and after some time it automatically gets logged out or a session has expired, right? So this happens and going ahead. So this is the uh, algorithm that is being used to uh, basically hash this token and generate this. So your secret key plays a very crucial part uh, in this and this secret key once generated and is as soon as you move to a production environment, it, ca it cannot be changed again throughout your application's life cycle okay so do take it in mind and do we need we'll talk about how to save it more effectively so let's go ahead and test this particular uh, feature that we have developed that is the login and okay so as i have tested this earlier it is coming so let's go ahead and re uh, send this api so yeah so right now we created this user in the previous video and the correct password over here so login is successful and we have gotten the jw token in the response Let's go ahead and change the password a bit and see if our things work or not. Okay. So right now, as soon as I entered the wrong password, it showed me the JDL token as null and invalid credentials. So it makes sense, right? The credentials are wrong, but let's see if the credentials are also right. 
and we can change the mail id also okay so still it will give us the same error that is the invalid credential because we created a check over here that uh, enables us to see whether the user is null and or the password does not match so this is the thing that we have done and we can check the same in the user as well as we not created any new entry so it's gonna be the same uh, yeah so i guess you, the pretty much the things are completed in the prospects of the sign up and these parts as well so later on in the next video what we'll be focusing on how to start off with the next process that is gonna be how to refresh your token refresh token and how to basically how does the front end works on these principles how the token gets refreshed automatically and how these things will work and how this thing can be scaled to a larger scale so yeah if you like this video guys uh, thank you and thank you for watching and do give me a thumbs up and you definitely subscribe to the channel as well for future videos